Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve leak code 2620 counter. And by the way, this is day two of leak codes JavaScript challenge. I think more and more companies are asking these types of questions, especially to front end devs. So I highly recommend checking these out. We are given an integer n and we want to return a counter function. The counter function should initially return n and then returns one more every time it's called. So on the first call, it should return n. Next call, it should return n plus one, et cetera, et cetera. Well, there's not much for us to visualize here. So let's go ahead and actually jump into the code now. Okay, so now let's get into the code. We do have some boilerplate here, but before we get into the code itself, I wanna show you how it's actually gonna be used. So down here, we have a create counter. That create counter is obviously defined up here. It's a function as you can see, but it actually returns another function and that's what we're gonna be implementing. Once that counter is created, remember it's a function, not just a value. So we're actually going to call this counter, even though it's a variable, it's a function. We can call it and it's gonna return 10 because 10 was the value passed in. We call it again, it'll return 11, then 12, etc., etc. So this is pretty weird if you've never used JavaScript before because this sounds like object-oriented programming, but JavaScript originally didn't support that. So people used functions and closure to get around it. What closure means is that this inner function has access to variables defined outside of it. We don't have to declare like a count in here and set it to n or whatever the value is passed in, we can just reuse the value defined outside here. What that means is we can do basically just this, return n plus plus. So what that's gonna do is increment n, but before it increments n, it's actually gonna return n. So it's gonna return 10 and then increment it. So the value n will be set to 11, but the value that's returned is gonna be 10. The next time we call it, it's gonna do the same thing. The value is currently 11 and that's what's gonna be returned. And then the value is gonna be incremented again. Basically, n is sort of a hidden state, right? It was only passed in once, right? We only passed 10 in here, but somehow that value still exists somewhere and we can't find it. We can't access it. It's there. We just can't access it. Pretty much like objects with like private variables. So now let me just run this to show you that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. But I'm going to continue with this example because to make it even more obvious that we're doing object oriented programming here, and I'm surprised that it passed even though I had this uncommented. So let me just comment that again. But to make it look even more like object oriented programming, pretty much from our previous video for day one, what we had was we declared a variable like the count and set it equal to n. And then from here, we can just go ahead and return the count. But of course here we're missing the incremention. So we should basically just do count plus plus. So this looks more like object oriented programming from other languages. And I'll run this as well. And this also works. And to go even further beyond, let's actually translate this code into a class because ES6 JavaScript, I think it came out in like 2015, did add support for classes. So let's create a class calling it counter. And so now more traditionally, we can actually create a constructor with the keyword constructor. Let's say it takes in the same value n pretty much like the outer function did out here. And just like above, this variable of course will not go out of scope. Well, normally it actually will, but we can make a member variable for it with the this keyword, this n is gonna be equal to n. So now we pretty much have what we did up above here. I guess I could name this count. Well, I'll leave it as is, nobody really cares. Now let's just define an increment method, which yeah, you don't need the function keyword in a class to do that. I know it's kind of weird, but yeah, when you're dealing with classes, you actually don't need the function keyword. So let's create that increment method. What's it going to do? Probably just return uh, this dot n. We could do plus plus, but this way it will return the original value or we could add this plus plus to the beginning to increment it before returning. I'm going to leave it at the end though. And now I'm going to create a counter with the counter constructor that we have up above passing in let's say 10 again and then I'm just going to call counter dot increment and what this will do is it'll log 10 I believe the first time I guess it's not really incrementing the value so maybe we could have moved this to the beginning actually let's do that let's move that to the beginning just to illustrate it 
Prefix incrementing will increment this before returning. So if it was given a 10, we will increment it and then return an 11. And we can do this many more times, just like down here. I know we pretty much talked about this in day one's video. I didn't realize that they were gonna be doing this in day two. I would have saved it for this video if I knew. But if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.